Number 39. Give the name of the prefix and the quantity indicated by the following symbols that are used with SI base units, and then I see A through H. So, like always, let's do the alphabet, and let's write out A through H. So, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. All right, now let's get down to the question. So, I see that I have a list of prefixes here. So, all of these are prefixes. Now, a prefix is just a letter that goes before your base unit. So, I'm going to put base unit. Now, your base units... There's a lot of them in the SI unit system, but you should know at least three, depending on whether you're talking about length, mass, or a volume. So usually it's going to be grams for mass, meter for length, and liter for volume. Now, seconds is also an SI unit, but let's just focus on the gram, meter, and liter for here. So... For any given prefix, so let's focus on, I don't know, let's focus on kilo. I like kilo. For any given prefix, and kilo is a prefix, you can have a kilo, ooh, oh boy, okay. So you could have a kilogram, you could have a kilo meter or kilometer, and a kilo liter, technically, because you could use all these prefixes for any single SI unit. So now, what does this exactly mean? How do you actually tie in a base unit with a prefix? So just know that it's always multiplied times by your factors. So, and yes, you do need to memorize this. It would help you out tremendously, I promise you. So with all of these factors, you all have to multiply by these numbers to get to your prefix. So... Let's just write out a simple conversion for how we do the prefix kilo. So, one times, and then your factor, 10 to the third, and this would be your base unit. So, either that gram, meter, or liter. So, one times 10 to the third, insert your base unit. So, let's just say gram would equal one kilogram. And yes, gram has to go with gram. You can't put like meter equals one kilogram. That doesn't work. They have to have the same base unit. And the same goes for the other ones. I could say one times 10 to the third meter equals one kilometer or one times 10 to the third liters equals one kilo liter. Now, you don't have to put the 1 in front because 1 times anything is the same exact number, but it just makes it like a scientific notation. So it's just, I guess, better understood if you have 1 times 10 to the 3rd instead of just 10 to the 3rd. But either one of them are correct, and just know that all of these are just equal to 1,000. So you could also just say 1,000 grams equals 1 kilogram, or 1,000 meters equals 1 kilometer or kilometer. They all mean exactly the same thing. So... For this one, though, they just want you to name the prefix and the quantity indicated. So I'm going to start with it. A, lowercase c, lowercase c is centi. So I'm just going to put for A, that is centi, and centi is always known to be 10 to the negative 2. And let's just put that number into non-exponential number for practice. Now, I went over how to determine how many zeros are in these types of numbers in the last question. So if you need a refresher, go back to the last one, number 38. But just know that if it's 10 to the positive number, that number is the same number of zeros. And I'm going to put zero with a little slash. That's my zero. If it's a 10 to the negative, it's going to be that number minus 1 will be the zeros after the decimal, and I'll put a dot there for decimal. So this is 10 to the negative 2, so 2 minus 1, so there should only be one zero after the decimal. So this would be 0 0.01, one zero after the decimal. 
Moving on. Lowercase d is always deci. So we got deci going on here. And just know that deci is always represented as 10 to the negative 1. So what's 10 to the negative 1? 1. It's less than 1. So 1 minus 1 is 0. So there should be no zeros after the decimal. So this would just be 0.1. I just have a habit of putting a zero in front. That's just me. Um, but just know that you only have to, you know, include the point one. I just like to have everything, you know, the zero's got to be there. I don't know. <laughs> Next, capital G. Capital G is giga. And giga is 10 to the 9. So I'm going to put G-I-G-A, giga, 10 to the 9, and if I had to write all these out, it would literally be nine zeros. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Whew. Crazy. So this is like one billion. So giga is basically a billion. Letter D, lowercase k. Lowercase k is what I highlighted before. That is kilo. Kilo is always 10 to the third. I'm going to put kilo here, 10 to the third, and just for practice, it's greater than, um, it's a positive number, so this equals 1, 2, 3. This number is the same as the zeros, 1, 2, 3, so this is 1,000. Moving right along, we got lowercase m, lowercase m is milli, and that's 10 to the third, so m-i-l-l-i. 10 to the, sorry, 10 to the negative 3. And if we had to write it out in just a numerical formula, it's negative 3, so I have to minus 1. So it would be dot zero zero one two zeros after the decimal, and I'm just going to put that little zero there. F is N. N stands for nano right here, and that's 10 to the negative 9. So here we go, nano, N-A-N-O, 10 to the negative 9. So that means that there should be eight zeros after the decimal. So if I do it over here, point, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that's crazy. And then the one. Such a small number. Moving right along, P is pico. This is even getting even more crazy. 10 to the negative 12. P-I-C-O. 10 to the negative 12. So if I just entertained myself, I would need how many zeros after the decimal? It's a negative number, so minus 1. So 11 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and then 1. Whew, that's super, super, super small. Last but not least, big T. Big T is tera, like a terabyte. Um, but still, nonetheless, Terra is 10 to the 12. So, T-E-R-A, 10 to the 12. This is a positive number, so that's as many zeros as I got. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Put those commas in after every 3. And there you go. Looks like 1 trillion. So, you could think of T, Terra, as trillion. Whew, we answered all the questions. <laughs> I hope this helped, guys. If it did, hit that subscribe button. It makes us know that you guys are learning, and that's what I like to see. Um, happy studying, guys. Hopefully this, this worked out for you guys. I'll see you all in the next question. See you later.